a TV show. Oh, hey guys, how you doing? Remember me? Welcome back to Reaper Fish in New Jersey. So, sorry about the delay, guys. Uh, I'm just putzing around. I'm trying to log into Rip Charts here. I'm having a little issue with my password. Kind of want to show you guys really what the early season canyon water looked like and really kind of why it's been, at least in my opinion, a, a pretty slow June. Um, it's now mid July. Uh, again, I'm sorry I haven't been putting out a lot of videos, guys. It's just been. Uh, it's been a rough month and a half, I guess. Um, we'll start, I guess, end of May. Um, did a lot of fishing on the little boat. I hope you guys enjoyed those videos. Me kind of, you know, going out solo and catching big stripers and, and uh, sea bass and all that. And I appreciate you guys watching. But then, really, kind of from there, I had this gnarly stretch of work in the middle of uh, in the beginning of June. And I think I had one day off there where the weather was really good. And actually, the fishing in the canyon was stellar. But I just didn't really have time to prep the big boat. And not only that, guys, I really didn't have a chance to, to do a shakedown trip on the big boat before going out to the canyon. I never like to make my first trip of the year out to the canyon. Usually, I run down to Delaware Bay for drum. I go sea bass, and you guys have seen those videos. So really kind of wasn't prepped. I mean, I got the boat in end of May, two days before that gnarly nor'easter. And it just beat everything up. Um, you know, you can my enclosure got ripped up. I'll put some pictures here. You can see the, the port stern got, got messed up. Um, and it really was the scupper, and I thought it was a minor problem, but it was actually a bigger problem. So I had to fix that. I had to fix the enclosure. So big delay in kind of fishing the big boat. Um, but I got a couple trips up my sleeve that I'm gonna share with you. And specifically, uh, the first trip that I actually went out just to kind of putz around on the big boat as a shakedown. I'll share that you know footage today. Um, that was really fun. Uh, we fought a sea monster. But at any rate, um, I can't lie, guys, I'm having a little bit of buyer's remorse about the contender. I thought I was going to be able to get out there and, and use the boat out, you know, on the midshore grounds. But, man, I, I can't seem to get more than one day off in a row on my little stretches off where I can actually even go on the big boat, let alone on the little boat. Um, it was a pretty expensive boat. And honestly, guys, I, did, I didn't need that big boat. But she's awesome. I love her. Hey, lady cat. Uh, but a little bit of buyer's remorse, but we'll see. It's still early. It's July 17th, but at any rate, I'm hoping to get rip charge logged on. Um, I kind of want to show you guys what produced good early June fishing. Um, again, from there, once this body of water was gone, it's really kind of been uniform cold green water in the canyons from the Hudson all the way down. Little tiny little temperature breaks here and there, um, and that produced some pretty slow fishing for most of the end of June, middle to end of June, and now the fish are all inshore. Um, we slayed them the other day. We went 8 for 12 chunking. I'll share that video with you guys. But at any rate, next up, I'm going to pull up rip charts and kind of show you guys what brought some good early season June fishing. And then from there, I'll show you our battle with the sea monster. So check it out. This is actually a, a screenshot from rip charts. This is from May 29th, okay? So what you see in here is I can see... I have this cursor and this is 61.6 degree water, all right? So this is pretty much good, decent stream eddy, all right? So the Gulf Stream comes up from the south, all right? It nips North Carolina and then it starts pushing to the northeast and it'll keep going on that outflow like this. Now what'll happen is from there, little eddies come off, they go in a clockwise rotation, well, clockwise rotation, and then they actually move southwest from there. So this was kind of one of those early season eddies that popped off over here, spun clockwise, and then moved southwest. So this water is 61.6, and from memory, it's probably in the, God, 54 degrees on the cold side, all right? If you can find that confluence, specifically as it starts abutting the 100 fathom line right here, okay, that's where your good early June fishing is going to be, all right? Now, that being said, this fishing right here was good right along this little break right here. All right, so this is going to be what's called your eddy, and then this is what's called a little filament. It pops off of the eddy. So you can see really cold water here. It was probably 52, 54, and this was probably like more like 60 degree water. And this is in some structure which is called the Hendrickson or the deep of the Tom. So this is the Hudson Canyon, 
this is the Tom's Canyon, then you got the Carteret, then you got the Spe Lindy, Spencer, Wilmington. And, and this break right in here produced some decent bluefin tuna fishing early um, and then um, just scattered yellowfin. Alright, so I'm pretty much going to stay on this same frame because this, this water didn't change much. This filament kind of fizzled out, but this leading edge right here that I'm pointing out, alright, and I, I tracked this edge and I said as soon as this hits the 100 fathom line or very close to it, this edge right here, I said it's going to be lights out. And sure enough it was, let me look at my phone, so it was June 3rd, that was the day that I had one day off, and again, I didn't have the big boat prepped enough to get out there, but this water came right up onto the 100 line, and the fishing, and the Carteret to the Lindy, and actually all the way up to the Toms, but the best was the Carteret to the Lindy call, was unbelievable. Um, I said, if you had any idea how to go out there and tuna fish, that was your day, alright? It kind of looked like this, it was this cold water abutting this warm water, because this edge kind of slid southwest a little bit. So that's really kind of what you're looking for. So now there. just a very extreme example kind of what I'm talking about, all right? So this orange, that's the Gulf Stream, all right? So again, it, early in the season, well, all season long, it comes for all the way up from Florida. It clips the outer banks. That's why you see all that stuff on the Silly Wicked Tuna, right? And then it starts spreading northeast, okay? Now what will happen in the early season is something like this, all right? It pops off. That's called an eddy. And you'll see this clockwise rotation. You see it? That's the, one of the most extreme examples you'll see. And you'll see this water right here. I mean that's 80 degree water, 76, now watch on the cold in that green. Boom, 72. So you have 72 abutting 76, or 72 abutting almost 76, 80 degrees, alright? And it's beautiful because it comes right up on the 100 line, right? Now, that being said, this beautiful water and this beautiful break is way out east. Here's the Hudson Canyon, which for me is the closest 96 miles. So this is Veach Canyon. This is Hydrographers. I think Atlantis is over here somewhere. But this is really, really far. I mean, you'd have to go to, I'd have to trailer to Rhode Island to come out and get this water. But there's stellar fishing going on right there right now. Yelfin, Big Eye, all that stuff. Lay Cat wants to be a star today, too. Hi, Leia. So... Early June, all right, so late May, early June, and into mid-June, really what you're looking for there is those temperature breaks, okay? Typically in the early season, it's usually going to be, you know, in June, it's going to be low 60 on the cold, and then probably mid to high 60 on the warm. And you find that break, and the fish are going to be either A, right on the break, on the warm side, or the cold side. Um, and the closer that confluence of temperature is to the 100 fathom line, the better your chances of good layup the better chances of good yellowfin tuna fishing and early season bluefin tuna fishing will be, all right? Now, we're in mid-July. We're not so much looking for hard temperature breaks. There usually will not be that many. Um, if it is, it's a true, beautiful Gulf Stream eddy. Um, but this time of year, it's really gonna be filled more with mahi and marlin. Um, but if it does come in close, you'll still have a good shot at good yellowfin tuna fishing. But this time of year, the last few years, it's more important to look at those chlorophyll shots to look for the cleanest bluer water. Um, and then also, this time of year, the fish, lately, the last few seasons, have been moving inshore. So they follow the bait inshore, the canyons kind of dry up, um, and now it's all about finding the bait, finding the best clearer water inshore in 20 to 30 fathoms, and really having a good network. It's all about where the bait is, where the good water is, and where the fish are. And it can change day to day, unfortunately. Um, now it's been, we did really well uh, just a couple of days ago on Thursday. We were way down south off Ocean City, Maryland. And then right now it's also going on up north by the Chicken Canyon, by the Atlantic Princess, by the Barnegat Ridge, Little Italy, all that stuff. But it's no spot burn. The fish are going to move every single day. So that's why I really want to get out on the contender because I can fly around, jig, pop, and chunk. Um, but at any rate, yeah, as the season progresses, these temp shots aren't as important, it's more about chloro, it's more about bait, and that bait you want to be on structure. Hey guys, I'm just really bummed, the last couple of Junes I haven't been out there to really get good June fishing. Um, it's like fishing in a barrel early June, when you get these hard breaks like this, as long as you find that break, I mean you can run 7 rods and you're going to come home with 10 plus the elephant tuna. Um, even on my old 32 Pro line running a 7 rod spread, we'd have all 7 go down multiple times a trip, I miss it. Um, 
But yeah, I was kind of putzing around with the contender too much early in the season, and it led to me being delayed on the big boat. But also that nor'easter just kicked our butt. So, team, I'm just loading up the rest of the footage here. I'm gonna get to editing. Um, yeah, I know I talk about work all the time. Uh, I will keep that private for now. What I do, but it took me the better part of 12 plus years to build my career. Um, I, I can't complain. I don't work that many days a month. However, if I am on that schedule, I have to be there. It's as simple as that. I don't get a single sick day. I don't get a single vacation day. I get nothing. If I'm on the schedule, I have to be there. So it, I'm really jealous of the guys and girls that can, you know, just kind of look and say, all right, Thursday, it's going to be no wind. You know, we'll get our work done Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and we'll go fishing Thursday. I don't have that luxury. Right now I'm off, what's today's uh, Monday? No. Yeah, today's Monday. I'm off Monday to Friday. There's not a single fishable day in there, and there's nothing I can do about it. So that's also kind of why there was a delay in really putting out videos. I haven't been fishing. So that's it. All right, team, June 20th. Uh, it's the first time this boat's left the slip in well over a month. I'm not sure what's going to come of this. We just want to leave the slip. We're going to run about, I don't know, right to run 20 fathoms, 30 fathoms, and just see if we see life. Had a hard northwest blow the last couple days. It's supposed to be mellowing throughout the day, and uh, it's around 12:30. So we're gonna get out there, and uh, if I see any kind of life, I'll put some lines out. If not, we're just gonna take a ride. But uh, if I see decent life, we're gonna fish hard till dark. Let's see. And team, does this feel good to be up in my fly bridge? Oh god, this is like my home. Um, but even more, my home is up here, 85 miles out. It's just been a tough season so far. Uh, Maybe I'll kind of share exactly why, but it's been rough. It's been rough on me, it's been rough on the boat. It's all just been rough. Uh, so, this just feels great. Honestly, if I just run out there, boat runs good, we make it back safe, no harm, no foul, I would be, uh, I'll be happy, honestly. In a little bit, I'll run down the engine room, put the earmuffs on and really look around quite a bit. And then all the while, I'm really watching my gauges Feeling everything, vibration, sound, smell, I mean all of it. Uh, you really kind of get in tune to how your boat runs, how it sounds, how it feels, how it smells, I mean everything. I know it sounds weird. Mark Shrink, you taught me that. Thanks, man. So I'll keep a real close eye on everything and uh, see what happens here. All right, guys, it's uh, right around quarter after 2, 220. Uh, the first spot is, is dead. It's lifeless. 120 foot of water. Um, I mean dead. Cold, green, 60, 60 degree water. Staring at a blank screen. So I'm gonna push east, probably southeast a little, get to the 30 line, run north, and just look for life. Mammals, birds, we're bluefin. All right, guys, we're on. Um, Eric, just reel when you can, okay? Okay, that's fine. Guys, that was the biggest explosion I've ever seen, ever. Just get those other ones out of the way. It's gonna take our grand old time here. That's all we're gonna do. All right, team, we're on. Uh, I marked a couple fish earlier, right by a sea turtle. Dad, just slow down that back up now, okay? Right around a sea turtle. I don't know if you can sense the excitement. Uh, I marked fish, and then as soon as I came back around the sea turtle, it looked like a truck got dropped in the water. So this is probably going to be a giant bluefin. Uh, we'll see. So we'll see. We got Eric on the rod holder right now, at least. So we'll see what happens. All right, at this point, we had backed down significantly. This fish spooled us, well, almost spooled us in just about 15 seconds. So you can see we're very much so into the backing there. Uh, I just went in hard reverse, told the guys, reel in anything you can, cut whatever you can, and uh, we didn't get spooled. I was really, really close. Wasn't expecting anything like that. <laughs> Jesus. You didn't see the explosion? I'd never seen anything like it. All right, team, now. My heart's racing about a thousand miles a minute right now. Um, I'm a pretty chill dude. This is the only thing that will bump my heart rate anywhere near this. I've said it before. Uh, you gotta try and stay calm. That's all you can do. Do you hear that real scream? Oh my God. I never heard a real scream like that. Yeah. Tom, do me a favor. Grab this other side for me. Go to about 73. So what's that? There's 72 right there. Yep. All right. So just so just above. So from the corner to just above that that rod holder. Okay. All right. Easy enough. Finger. A finger above that rod holder. 
job, baby. Good job. Good job, baby. Good job, baby. This is a knife in a gunfight situation here. <laughs> No. All right, team. So I got. I'm getting the harpoon all ready to go. Cleared all the rods. Just light tape on there. Tom, as we get a little closer, okay. If we get close enough for me to dart them, I'm gonna dart them. I'm gonna say take this for me. That means just take the metal piece, okay? Yeah. Take the metal and just try and slide it back inside, okay? okay. All right. Big fish, boy. See you later. Big fish. Jesus, look at that rod. Got a hair forward. Go, go, go. Just a hair. A hair port forward. Just a hair. One of the very rare instances I actually yell on my boat, uh, told the dad, you know, port forward, and we were going in reverse. So I actually yelled for once. Very rarely yelled at the crew, but uh, had to be done. I just wanted to come out here and catch like a 30 pounder. I would have been happy. Shit. I'm not complaining, but. No. I would just want. Honestly, if we this see it, 10th degree. yeah, if we see it, I'll be happy to be dead honest with you. Team Eric stayed on the rod for about two hours or so. He did a great job, um, stayed calm, just did the best he could. Um, yeah, I, I took over at some point. Tom Sr. took over, uh, but Eric really, um, you know, did most of the work here. Yeah, 130, we could beat this thing up, no problem. Even like uh, my buds that go to North Carolina, they say even between an 80 and a 130, it's a whole different ballgame. Yeah. yeah, they say like down there, you know, you take an 80 and it's just like you're, you're so undergone, it's not even funny. We are at, uh, I think, hour, an hour and 15 minutes. Again, we got this thing on 50. <laughs> One of my dad's rods. Great for health and fishing, but it ain't meant for this or inshore. Uh, again, knife to a gunfight. Just trying to stay calm. Just hoping we get this fish tired and up to the boat so I can, you know, get a measurement on them. Who would who would think that there'd be a giant bluefin here right now? I mean, they come through all the time. Don't get me wrong, but you know, if you're running 130s, you're you're this, giant bluefin too. Yeah. All right, guys. Here we go. There's Santiago, the old man in the sea, on the rod. Every bit of 76, 77 years old, I think. God, he might even be 78. I'm not really sure. He looks so young. But, yeah, he fought the fish for probably about an hour himself. Unreal. The guy's awesome. I always say, don't let the old man in. He taught me that. All right, Craig, Craig. He's coming up right now, Craig. Hey, there's a circle right there. There's a circle. guys Santiago beat him up for a little while we're back to Eric we'll see what happens next all right he's running now let him run huh? your handle the bolt for your handle just fell off shut up no. nope need the bolt here in the water up there right here bolt where Bob right here let me see it just fell off I went in the water okay hold on a second just do the best you can right now okay all you can do. Let's go, Bob. Uh, forward, forward. Forward, forward. Forward, forward. All right, all right, reverse, right. Port reverse, port reverse. Right. Just get a little reverse momentum. Take some of that tension off. Dad, just keep touching on this line, okay? Yeah, it sheared it, I see. So it actually sheared the pin, hold on. It's got way slack. Forward. Is 
accept that. One sec. Don't drop this, Chris. Don't drop this, whatever you do, Chrissy. Yeah, get the call. Just don't touch the rod. I mean, the line. Come on, man. Just need a little fucking luck here. Tom, pick up that screwdriver. Wow, this, oh, this fish is giant. I'm just feeling the tension on this. This thing's huge. Yeah, no wonder why that thing's sheared. Yeah. This thing's absolutely huge. Do you want to see it? I don't know if that's gonna happen, Bob. <laughs> be honest with you. All right, guys, so with that thing sheared, I was able to do a makeshift little hoozy watcher. This thing's huge. All right, little starboard. I don't think we have a shot. Now that I feel that tension, Come on, old girl. Come on, old girl. One more time for me. Come on. I've had this real. I've had this rod and reel since I was probably 14 years old. Yeah. Well, my dad did, but. Got a lot of fish under its belt. Yeah, this thing's this thing's huge. It's... Something out of a TV show. Now that I'm feeling the weight of this fish, team, I, I'm not. Very confident we're gonna be able to see this thing, but we're gonna give it hell. All right, team, I gave it a little go here for a while. Um, I never felt power like this ever. Um, maybe the only other thing that could compare was a big sword that we broke off. Actually, we had to cut off after like six hours uh, a couple of Novembers ago um, after it burned up our uh, Shimano Beastmaster, probably like a you know. 400 plus pound swordfish. I never felt power like this ever. We need a 130. 130 on a custom rod is what we need. Good job, E. Good job, E. Good job, Eric. Good job, Eric. Come on. Come on, fish. Get past that thermocline. Get up here. Yeah. Two, oh, wow. Oh, my God. 220 we've been on him. It's just that one, he's probably down yeah. 60 feet, 60, 80 feet, right below, you know. Yeah. You can see him just sitting there, don't, 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 swimming in the thermocline. Just... Come on, fish, come up. Come on, come up, that's it, come up. Come on. Look at that angle change, come on, come up. Come on, get up. Look at that angle change, come on, get up. Oh man, how good would it feel if we can dart this thing? How good would that feel? Put a tail rope on them, swim them, put them right through that door, take them home and eat them. Okay, bub. Give me one sec. Good job, dude. You're a fucking beast, man. I'll try and do the best I can. Oh, I can imagine, dude. Oh my god. It was better over there, I think. Yeah, well, I moved over here. It's bad. It was right over there. No, it's okay. Yeah, that was really close dude stop it stop running I think our only chance is if he dies I'm, I'm being serious I think that's our only chance is if he dies I can't we can't we can't call home either <laughs> the sat phone's on my little boat sorry sorry so the Coast Guard comes out for us. Sorry, but yeah, I mean, at some point our reel is going to break. All right, neutral. neutral. Oh my God, how can he still run against that? It's insane.
stay patient. If the fish wins, he wins, but we can't beat ourselves. We're really close, trust me. Uh, we're outclassed. Yeah. We're outclassed by sure, yeah. But I think right now all we can do is beat ourselves, I'm telling you. Yeah. What? Okay. All right, team, I saw him. I saw him twice. Bluefin, giant, absolutely giant, biggest fish I've ever seen. Uh, we're so close, we're so outgunned. Real handles broke. Um, I don't know how long we've been on it. I think three and a half hours now. Three and a half hours. Three and a half hours. Just trying to do everything I can to somewhat keep the odds a little bit in our favor. Um, well, that's not possible, but um, we're really close. I mean, I saw him. We're real close. We got the drag up almost to full. Well, just about to full, really. Uh, so we'll see. I saw him. I'm excited I saw him. At this point, the wind actually started really cranking hard out of the south. We had uh, days of northwest. It was basically a half a day of chill winds, and then it just started howling out of the south. It was predicted. It was forecasted. So I can't complain, but it made things uh, even harder. Oh, there it goes. You all right, Tom? Yeah, I'm all right. All right. That's all right, as long as you're okay. Oh, we broke off. That's all right. He won his freedom. That's all right, good job. That's okay. I'm right with that. All right, guys, that's it. We're done. We broke him off. Nine o'clock. All right, guys, Heartbreak City. Four hours. It was awesome. That's fishing. It was just fun. Got my heart rate up. See you on the next adventure. All right, y'all, that's the little piece that's sheared right there. I don't know if you can see. That thing sheared right about halfway. Yeah, I was able to makeshift things together. So these are, God, every, it looks like everything's the same between the 30s and the 50s. So I'm going to piecemeal it all back together and go from there. So this is what we're left with, all right? So the rod tip is obviously the wrong direction. Oh, good Lord. We got a lot of drag. And the line is all sorts of shaped. I don't know if you, it's hard to see, but yeah, it lines all sorts of shaved. So, butter knife to a gunfight. I'm going to take this 50 off. I'm going to basically take this 50 off, rebuild the real handle mechanism, and kind of go from there. I'll get that re spooled. It should be just fine, honestly. The drag was fine. 